What's up everybody, it's your boy Terrell, and you might be wondering what I'm doing on Indeed's channel. Indeed's mission is better work, better lives. And that is never truer than in the month of June when queer folks from all over celebrate Pride. And Pride is what today is all about. What it means to bring your true, authentic self into your professional world and how it contributes to your overall quality of life. I am here today to highlight a few unique voices that have been an inspiration to us all. From their belting voices, to their catchy lyrics, and even their ability to seemingly know the answer to every trivia question known to man. We've got a great show coming up for you today and to kick it off with a performance of his hit song, Higher, give it up for my friend, Vincent. Where have, where have you been all my life? And boy, don't stop taking me. Midnight in Brooklyn, you leaning in first. I wasn't looking, but there you were, my fallen angel. Calling my name, calling my name. My fallen angel. Calling my name, calling my name. Lost in a dark room, walking on air. I don't have to see you to know you're there. I die for the way you're. I die for the way you're. I don't have to fit so still. We can dance together. Don't be scared. Your every desire. Take me home, but take me higher. The way you make me feel. I swear you take me higher. Yes, I'm your every desire. You take me higher. In silence as we get higher and complicated. Oh, Too many nights I was trapped in my mind, trying to break free. Yeah. Now I surrender. Take me to heaven. Come on. Give it up for your host, Terrell. Oh, oh my God. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my. Welcome to the Rainbow Room. What? I know that's right. Yes. This is Take Pride Live, brought to you by Indeed. A fierce voice does something to me. Right, did y'all hear Vincent just now? Yeah. Did he not do that? Give it up for Vincent again. Yeah. He gonna come back and talk to us a little bit more. But I want you to know something today is all about hearing from your favorite queer voices who know all too well what it's like to navigate the professional landscape as members of the LGBTQIA+ community. <laughs> Everybody. And we want to hear from you. I want to talk about pride for a bit because it's June, right? And 
When I think of pride, I think of honesty, right? Sometimes, I'm gonna be a little vulnerable, is that okay? Sometimes, I may get a little apprehensive, a little nervous, a little unsure about what others may think of me. But what pride is, is not letting that change me, right? Not letting that dictate the way that I walk, the way that I talk. I am a proud, black, gay, whiskey-loving, church-loving fool. Now, I dare you to say something about it. I'm gonna be all those things at the same time, yes? Every last one, okay? So that's what I think about when I think about pride. And I want to hear from you guys at home as well. Share with us what take pride means to you in the workplace by leaving a comment in the live chat to the right or using the hashtag take pride indeed on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, okay? Throughout the show, I'll be chatting with a jam-packed lineup of queer icons about their personal and career journeys, along with a few very special queer spotlights of some of the folks whose roles behind the scenes helped make this show happen, okay? Plus, we're gonna be getting some epic live performances. Y'all know I love a live performance. Yeah. We got Vincent. Y'all know Victoria Monet? Y'all my people. OK, we here. And as well as someone who has seemingly been everywhere and is no stranger to the work here at Indeed, give it up for Mika. He's also here. He going to do it. And I heard if you guys show up and show out today, Mika might, just might, debut a brand new song that's never been performed before just for y'all right here in the Rainbow Room. How does that sound? All right. <laughs> so before we get started, I want y'all to understand something, okay? Listen to me good. I know we in the Rainbow Room and it's all historic and fancy and stuff. Yes, but we trying to blow the roof off this place. I want to hear you. And I got some help, huh? Y'all give it up for DJ Tricks up in here. Hey! Yay, yay, yay! Don't you look good? Don't you look good? Don't you look good? Yes! Come on! I know that's right. Yes! One more time for DJ Tricks. Okay. Well, Indeed gets the importance of having LGBTQIA people at all levels of the workplace, which is why I was so excited when our first guest booked Coachella. Through his gift of song, he's been a light in so many lives, including my own. I want y'all to give another round of applause once again for Vincent! <laughs> <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? Sit down. What? Look at this. Babe, I'm not, now, why did you do that? How do girls do it? <laughs> how does anyone do it in a skirt? I'm dead. You know I've known you for a long time. Yeah. Since the four. Did y'all watch the four on Fox? Yeah. I hope y'all didn't watch my reaction videos of this. Oh. That was a, that was, did you watch it? Yeah. I'm sorry. Not sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> did I ever run into you at Target? Yes. Did that happen? You did. What happened? You yelled at me I sure at did. a public place and I you did. almost got put out. Vinny! That's what I said. What's a different place? <laughs> a different time. Um, we're here to talk about pride, and I want to ask you a couple of questions about just your journey throughout this crazy industry um, as a part of this community. Creating a safe space is important, right? Yeah. You're a musician. You're in the studio a lot. How do you make sure that the space that you cultivate is cool? I think it first starts with understanding that I am the creator of that environment. Yeah. So whatever I say kind of goes. Come on. I don't allow people into my space who are not like-minded. Mm. I love a good conversation about things, and I love to be challenged. But when it comes to the safety of the people in my community, whether it be the LGBTQIA community or the black community, I want to feel at ease in everything that I do. My most important thing in my life is my peace of mind. Yeah. So when I walk into any space, it will be what I say it is because I need that for me. Yeah. And I take I care that. of me first. I'm a cat for that. Yeah. Let's talk about your origin story for the ones who don't know, right? Yeah. So take me back. Tell your own story. How did this whole journey start? 
So I started singing when I was seven. My dad was a gospel singer and he was in a gospel group for a very long time. Yeah. I grew up loving music and then I started writing songs when I was 14. Thought that they were the world's best songs. They were not, but it was some place to start. And then I found out about the Berklee College of Music in Boston. I applied. I got into two colleges. I got into that college and I got into Harvard. And I only told my parents. Pause. <laughs> but, <laughs> Hold up, hold up. What did you say? I got into Harvard and I got into Berkeley, but I only told my parents I got into Berkeley. That's a smart thing, because you didn't want to go to Harvard, you didn't want to break their heart. It just wasn't going to work. That's good. And they were down, they're down the road from each other, and that's yeah. how I started. And ever since Berkeley, I mean, it's one of the best music schools in the country, and it was the perfect place for me to cultivate who I wanted to be as an artist and a yeah. songwriter and a storyteller. And then moved to LA, did the whole LA thing. Yeah. And reluctantly went on the four because I thought, I hate seeing competitions. Oops, cat's out the bag. <laughs> um, I hate them, but I love the idea of just being able to stand somewhere and sing and be myself and not be judged for it. Yeah. And they allowed me to do that on that show. Yeah. So that's kind of where everything started. That's where I met you. And then since then, how many years ago was that? That was f four, four years ago, yeah. That is nuts. It does not feel yeah. like that long. I know. And I, like, look where we are now. I know, just getting finer every day. That's what we draw on, dude. Thank you. So I want to ask you this, because you've had so many moments throughout the last four years. It's good that you brought that up, because four years was a minute ago. Half of that time was in the pandemic. Yeah. How was it working within the pandemic, creating music, and you know, starting your career as a solo artist? I think it, randomly, the, pen, the year of 2020 was probably my su most successful year, and I never left my house. Yeah. I, if you know anything about shooting things for brands or prides, you kind of have to come up with the idea on your own and like, make it work. Mm -hmm. So my house turned into a factory of like, every wall was a different landscape every day for everything. And I was like, hi, welcome to Conge. <laughs> but it was one of those things where it taught me, it's like, it also made me really take stock of why I do what I do. Yeah. Because I think as artists or any creator who likes to do what they do and have the public give them some sort of validation, it was nice to do these things for me and understand that writing music and singing is therapy for me. And it's a privilege to get to show it to other people and hope that it helps them in some way. And I think that kind of helped it be successful because yeah. it just, I wasn't doing it for it to be heard or seen. I was doing it because I needed to get it out. Mm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, there's a lot of challenges that I know that comes with creating music, yeah. being in the entertainment industry, period, yeah. and doing what we do, looking like we look, being who we are. Of course. What, are, what were some of those challenges, and how did you overcome them? Everything you just named. <laughs> being yeah. gay, mm -hmm. being black, being dark-skinned, mm. Talk about being it. an effeminate man, being a masculine man, being... All the things that make up me were not first, they're not the first thing you think of when you think of a pop star or what you're fed to think of as a pop star. And mm -hmm. I had to take into consideration that people's opinions are just that. You can do the things that you want to do. You just don't have to have the approval of others. And I think people waste a lot of their life yeah. trying to get people to understand and see them the way that they want to be seen as opposed to just being what they are and letting everyone else kind of just fall in line when they fall in line. For me, I understood that everything people didn't like about me were the things that made me great. And I grew up in a really strong family. My mother's the, probably one of the strongest women I know. And every day it was like, no, we don't, I raised you. You don't, yes. you don't know them. You are strong, you're black, it doesn't matter if you're gay, you're beautiful, I love you the way you are. It was an everyday thing that then translated into my life as an everyday mantra. So when I walked into these spaces, and when people say, what do you bring to the table? I'm the table. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Build the table. <laughs> Lumber. <laughs> but you know me. Uh -oh. You know me for four years. Oh, God. You know I love games. Yes. wait and come back to it. Okay. So you go on backstage and, you know, <laughs> block some more. And then when you come back, uh, we're going to play a game, all okay. right? Yeah. So we've got more to come, but for now, here's our first queer spotlight from the team that is making today's show happen. Take a look. Pride in the workplace comes down to having empathy and connecting with your fellow human beings. And, and, and like, generally, it's... 
It's less of a hashtag than a sense of fully being present. Being a full spectrum human being, which is what I want for everybody. When my next guest isn't writing hit after hit after hit for artists like Ariana Grande, Brandy, Chloe and Halle, just to name a few, she's writing her own story as a bona fide solo artist. And if you know like I know, she one of the girls, okay? Yeah. Do not play with Miss Monet, honey. Here to perform her song, Coasting. Woo! Y'all my people. It's Victoria Monet, give it up! <laughs> What's up, New York? <laughs> I'm Victoria Monet. Give it up for Gary down here on the guitar. Yeah. Happy Pride. This is Coasting. Hey, boy, I don't want to waste your time, but thinking of you is how I spend mine. Tell me, baby, baby, what's your sign? Because you're astronomically fine. And all I do I see you. Baby, all I do is, is, I think of the way, the ways I want to get this ass, just how you like. Feel like a Thursday, how I'm throwing it back. I'm going to make it go north, south, east, west coast. Baby, we can go north, south, east, west coast. Just tell me how you want it. Got it. Who gon' do it better? Nobody, body. Just let my hips take you on a trip. I swear they don't make them like this. Think of the ways. The ways I wanna give you this ass. Just how you like. Feel like a Thursday, how I'm throwing it back. I'm gonna make it go north, south, east, west coast. Baby, we can go north, south, east, west coast. Yeah, yeah. your songs. Oh, thank you. And I love all the songs you've written for others. Thank you. You so are much. so, you are more multifaceted than most. Do you know that? Oh, wow. You really are. Thank you. Sorry, let me rephrase that. You're more talented than most. <laughs> Can I say that? I'm going to say that. Thank you so much. Period. My show. That's what I said. Yes. You are a singer. Yes. You are a, you're a mom. I'm you're a, a mom. writer. Yeah. How do you do it all? Ooh, God knows. Um, it's really just about balance for me. I yeah. just, a schedule is definitely super helpful. Um, just to, time management is yeah. what, really what motherhood has taught me. Just making sure that 
when I rapped, I rapped. You, you rapped. know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I so know I, that's can, right. I can just balance motherhood and spending time and also being the creative that I want to be and like, you know, following my passion too. Yeah. So. When you're writing for other artists, how do you remain true to your voice? Um, honestly, when you're writing for other artists, that's your time to humble yourself and take the step back. Mm. I think it's um, it's really your, your time to listen. You yeah. know, in the friendship when you're like, you're venting and you're talking about yourself all the time and then your friend has also has their things they want to talk to you. Yeah. I think songwriting is that time where you really take in what the artist wants to say and through your blessings and through what your gift is, you yeah. gift them with their story if they didn't know how to put it in their own words. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I'm asking a hard question, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I'm asking a very hard question. Yeah. Give me like your top three songs that you've written for another artist. Oh, Just you writing know what? alone. Honestly, yeah. Thank You Next was really, um, really, really a Thank fun moment because it was my first number one. I had been writing for years and years before that, but also, yeah. The artist Ariana's first number one, yeah. and the energy it, you feel when a lot of people know the song, and then yeah. you get to see people in the arena singing it, it's just, it's crazy. So we I have to name that works. one, of yes. course. Um, I love Do It by Chloe and Halle. I think they're incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I, uh, you know what? I feel like I gotta say Seven Rings also, because it was another one. <laughs> <laughs> Understand, those are all three major hit songs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you have more. The list goes on. Now, you are a boss, okay? Yes. When you go into a studio, you are running the show. How do you make sure that you are cultivating a safe environment for people within our community? I feel like being honest with myself and telling my story and... and and singing my truth and being vulnerable in that way, I think that creates an open space for yeah. everyone to have that dialogue with me as well. And sometimes when people find out if they didn't know before that I'm bisexual, they're like, oh, hey, girl. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> then yeah. it welcomes that conversation and they feel more comfortable. So I feel like yeah. it really just comes from being honest with myself and, and vulnerable enough to put it on record and sing about it. Yeah. You know? Have you ever had a session with an artist that you were writing for and they were struggling with their own identity. And you tried to help them maybe put that to music and help them heal and find relief through music. I actually haven't had that experience with anyone else, yeah. but it was an internal battle with myself for sure. Mm. So I could say that I'm that artist. Mm. Um, before I came out, I was kind of lying about using certain pronouns if it was a a song about a boy. I was, I was like, he did this and, and he did. I'm like, it wasn't about him though, you know. <laughs> so I had to like really rethink what my art was and my message and just be true to the actual experiences yeah. that happened with, you know. Why did you feel like you had to do that at that time? And then what happened in your life to make you change to go? You know what? I'm living my truth. You know what? I feel like I was welcomed with open arms um, when I came out. So that's why I felt more comfortable telling the truth, yeah. but before that I was just hiding because of the way I was raised, and church and all the thoughts and just being kind of shut in and, and the way the world perceives us sometimes, yeah. but. Come on, listen. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's right. And it also, it's just been yeah. so helpful to have a community yeah. um, the, to be welcomed by, you know? So that, I think that makes it a lot easier um, just us being nice to each other is really helpful because you never know when the person you're standing next to is not really telling their truth. So, That's good. Yeah. You never know what that person next to you is going through. Yeah. When you're looking for collaborators, because you're a collaborator. Yes, right? I love to collaborate. Um, what are you looking for in, in that collaborator? What are some of those traits and do they align with pride? Yes, honestly, I feel like the people who I love to work with the most are super supportive, they're very kind people, yeah. um, celebratory, very talented, um, and they have a vision. And I feel like that mm. all those things um, have to do with pride. And it all lines up with happiness, and happiness comes from true honesty. When you don't have that second, second guessing voice in your head, like, should I do this? Mm -hmm. It's just like you do whatever you feel naturally, and then that's how you create the happiness and the light from within, and then you're prideful in that. You know I just love you. <laughs> I'm going to ask you this. There's yes. a chance that someone watching right now yes. may be going to work or home and they're not able to be themselves yeah. with their coworkers or their families. What would you say to them? Oh, 
That's really, that's really hard. I, I would say, um, although the internet is named a very dangerous place for us, there are other people out there that identify the same way that you do. So you just have to find your honey. There's a like, I, I view it as like a honey pot. Like all the bees go, all the, the special bees go here and yeah. we all collide and we belong together and we'll support each other and we can work together. And so you have support out there if you can kind of block out, literally block the haters and then find <laughs> that community that identifies with you, which is we're all right here and we're gonna welcome you with open arms and I know that from experience and it's gonna be okay and you can be yourself. I'm going to tell you the same thing I told Vincent earlier, okay? And Victoria, you know me too. You know I love games. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what you about to play? So, I'm going to need you to stick around too, okay? okay. Because uh, it, the game is going to be multiplayer. It's like okay. spades and okay, stuff. I'm you got to tap in. Okay. okay. <laughs> you play spades? You know how to play spades? I do not know how to play spades. <laughs> I can play Connect Four. Okay, look at, uh, actually. <laughs> I'll take that. Okay. I'll take that. <laughs> so stick around and stay okay. with me. But first, another queer spotlight from our team. First of all, people were telling me I was gay long before I even knew what that meant. And then when I found out what it meant when I was a little kid, it made me very upset, very angry, very anxious, very felt kind of alone and isolated. And then I got to a point later on when I realized, oh, I am this thing so many people were letting me know I was. Um, I got to a point where I was okay with it and fine with it. Um, but I think pride means not being just fine with it. Pride means loving who you are. I, for one now, love the fact that I'm gay. I think pride is also vulnerability because I had to unlearn many years of hiding that or feeling like it was something to be ashamed of. So now it's not just something to be fine with, but something to share with everyone. I want to share my gayness with all of you. <laughs> okay. Between Vincent, Victoria, and me, we got enough people up here to start a Destiny's Child cover band. Um, but we can't do that because Vincent don't know the words to cater to you, so. That, that's not true. That is not true. So we're going to play trivia instead. <laughs> we're not going to embarrass you, Vincent. <laughs> that's not true. Um, now, I'm going to bring on somebody who knows a thing or two about trivia, OK? Audience, see if you can ID our mystery guest based on the following clues. Now, she recently had the second largest winning streak in Jeopardy history, 40 games. Yeah, you can, you can say something for that. <laughs> that makes her the most successful woman to compete on the show ever. She raked in a whopping <laughs> $1.3 million in women. Give me $20. Give it up for Amy Schneider. Yes. Yes, girl. Oh. Welcome to the show. Oh, my goodness. I just got smarter just by my IQ just shot up, man. Yeah. All right, now I've been up here talking all day, so much you take it away. <laughs> all right, sounds good. All right, well, thanks Terrell, and thanks to the Rainbow Room. Yeah. So uh, it is, <laughs> go, that's right. It is going to be my honor to lead us all in a round of Indeed or Girl Please. All right. <laughs> we are going to go through some of your favorite queer celebs and name a random side hustle they might have had before they hit it big in their careers. Terrell, Vincent, and Victoria, if you think that that person actually did that job before they hit it big, flip your paddle to the Indeed side. Okay. And if you think we're just yanking your chain, flip it to the Girl Please side. That's right. An audience, you all have your paddles as well, so pick them up and you can weigh in too. Uh, and if you're on the live stream, you can play along by tip it, typing indeed or girl please into the chat. Are we ready? Yes. Let's do this. All right, all right. All right. Well, here we go. Indeed or girl please. Okay. Before hitting it big, RuPaul worked as a used car salesman. I Ooh. can see it. I can see that. Indeed yeah. she did. Yeah. Well done, well done. The if you can't you know. drive yourself, how the hell are you gonna drive somebody else? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed or girl please, before her daytime talk show and comedy career, 
Ellen DeGeneres was once a ride operator at Disneyland. Oh, girl, please. <laughs> <laughs> she did that. She did that. A uh, girl, please. Yes. Not that we know of, no. Oh, she did not do that. You know Ellen ain't at no Disneyland she was ride, no operating on rides. She was <laughs> She's been rich for a long time. <laughs> before Disney. Right. <laughs> Not before Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> before he was a host and reality TV king, Andy Cohen worked as an intern at CBS News alongside Julie Chen. Sure. Ooh. That sounds like he would have did that. Yeah. yeah, that seems pretty unanimous. And indeed, Not unanimous. he did. That yes, is right. Yes, yeah, unanimous. Yeah, First we did that supposed one. to know that already? Yes. Right. Oh, everybody knew that. <laughs> All right, indeed, or girl, please, our friend Vincent used yep. to babysit a walrus home in Beverly Hills. I am not sure what that means. Paul, <laughs> what is a walrus womb? Walrus house? A what walrus, it's a walrus home. A home to walrus. You better not be babysitting no walrus. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that. Girl, please. <laughs> you did it? <laughs> no, you did not do it. I yeah, was, explain yourself. When I first moved to LA, I was a temp, so I had a lot of different jobs for the first two years. And I went to this woman's home in Beverly Hills to babysit her kids. And she said she had three kids, and she had a walrus named Bruce in this oh, Olympic-sized pool. And I watched Bruce for two years. Stop! Yeah. What? Like, clean, fed, all of it, yeah. Wow. It was great. I love Bruce. Did you sing to Bruce? <laughs> I did. Wow. I sang to Bruce and he would clap his little hands. No, he didn't. It was great. No, yeah. he did not. That's I loved him. So cute. It was the best time. <laughs> no, but it, it does sound like there's a walrus out there that needs right. a babysitter. You know? That's so, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you put that on your resume? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Okay, Bruce. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, indeed, or girl, please. Before Victoria Monet was making coin as a musical genius, she was handing out coin as a bank teller. I have no idea. I can see it. No. You're nice. Yes. You're nice. You're nice. Yeah, bank you did are that. Nice. Yeah. Did you do that? I can see it. All right. Ah! What? Ah! How did I know that? Yeah. It was a That's long time true. ago. It's also because you talk like you always been around money too. So I, no! I like her for me. I like that. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> I've been on the road where you been. <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of which, indeed yeah. or girl, please, our host, Terrell, was once a calculus tutor. Ah, oh, uh, no. come on oh. now. <laughs> Not Did girl, please, calculus? so fast. Yeah. It was girl, please, so fast. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> just because he went to hard. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> and you won $1.3 million <laughs> on a jet plane. And you was, it's indeed. Yes, I did. Wow. Yes, I did. Come on, limits, logarithms, <laughs> integrals. You know what I'm talking about. I, I do, yes. <laughs> Dang, she does, though. <laughs> yes, I did do that. Y'all wow. wrong for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we are down to the final question here. Okay. Indeed or girl, please, did I? Amy Schneider do the following jobs before I was Jeopardy royalty, uh, selling Cutco knives, delivering Ooh. pizza, and working as a cater waiter. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. You did the pyramid scheme? All the jobs. Oh, I did. Every, yeah, you like, did the pyramid <laughs> Yeah, I sure did. I sold, oh, I sold one uh, pizza cutter. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's right. Indeed, indeed, indeed I did indeed. all those. <laughs> Victoria and Vincent. Good. You lovely. More with Amy when we come back. Yeah. When I was younger, um, when I just moved to the city, I was actually really afraid to come out at work. And I think that as queer people and gender non-conforming people, there is always a level of fear of, oh, will I not fit in? Or will I get fired? Or will someone not want to hire me because I'm gay or gender non-conforming? And I think that that is a real fear that I'm still getting over. And you know, it's really like having trust that people are good and people care. Um, but I think that that fear is something that is still with me today. <laughs> My next interviewee needs no introduction because 
I just did it. So we just gonna go ahead and do the interviews. All right. All right. Sounds good. Now I know. First of all, thank you for taking over my hosting duties over there. Y'all, this shit. Yeah, you're welcome. Very good. Yeah. I like playing the game once or twice, just to you know, just to give myself a little break. But now it's time to quiz you. Okay. All right. Uh, and you're good at quizzes. I've heard. Uh, so people seem to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting to have you here, Amy. Thank you for being with us today. First question is just, I, I watch Jeopardy, and I, I think to myself, you, you are not smart at all, T. <laughs> How do you be knowing? It's just the, 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 the genres and the topics, they know no end. You just know a bunch of stuff. I just know a bunch of stuff. I don't know. I was born with a really good memory, and I'm yeah. interested in a lot of stuff. And I've been watching the game as long as I can remember. So, like, I'm yeah. just sort of used to the sort of things they ask. Yeah. Man, is yeah. there any trick to the to the trade of how to get on there? Like, if, like if you're me and you only know like a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the main thing is that if you get to the audition, they want you to be really fast. That's Ooh. like one of the main things that they're the looking buzzer. for. Well, on the buzzer and also like give your response, go to the next thing, because they're always trying uh, to keep the show moving along. So they don't want people being like, uh, I guess I'll take that over there. Right. So yeah. Is the test open book? <laughs> well the, the first book? the first round of testing is online, so uh, yeah. Okay. Oh that's good. Yeah. Oh that's great. But then you have to take it again when you get there. Then you have to take it again with somebody watching. All right, well, <laughs> now, uh, when you finally got to compete, were you nervous on uh, Jeopardy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? I mean, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was national television, all that sort of thing. And it was, you know, I mean, I'm still relatively early. I'm about five years into my transition. And so mm. um, that was being public in a way I hadn't been for a while. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were the first trans contestant to qualify for the Tournament of Champions. <laughs> That's extraordinary. Thank you. Extraordinary. Can we take a moment for that? Because that, I mean, it's 2022. You know, the world, the world is cr crazy, but it's still changing. Yeah. And we're still growing every day. And your life has changed since your iconic winning streak, right? How has your life changed? Uh, in so many ways. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm here right now, for example. That would have been surprising a year ago. <laughs> um, and yeah, you know, just this being recognized on the street and all that sort of thing. But I mean, I think the best thing is that I've just been able to uh, go a lot of places, talk to, work with a lot of people, like be able to feel like I'm kind of like giving back to, to my community after, yeah. after all that they've done for me and, and for all trans people over the years. Yeah. 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 And since your success on Jeopardy, you've kind of changed your careers and, and redirected. Tell me about that. Yeah, no, I, um, I suddenly, you know, I've been feeling like a lot of people during COVID, like, is this really what I want to be doing yeah. this anymore? Am I still really get f feeling fulfillment here? And so, I mean, I think the best way to deal with that is to win $1.3 million. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> she even found out. <laughs> What are you hoping to accomplish in the public arena? Well, I think a lot of it is what I already accomplished on Jeopardy just by being public. You know, I, I heard from so many people what a difference it made to them, to their, their parents and their grandparents in, in just, you know, showing them that, you know, who trans people are. You know, I was raised with the same myths of, as everyone else, that trans people are weird and evil and dangerous and all that sort of thing. But just when you meet a trans person, you realize that can't be true. Mm. And so, you know, what I hope to accomplish is to just keep spreading that message that trans people are just normal people and none of us really need to be making any fuss about it at all. Yeah. We're sitting here now but five years ago, very different situation, right? Mm -hmm. What would you tell the you from five years ago? I would tell myself Go that... on Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I was already doing, like, that was going to happen regardless. That was always the plan. Yes. Um, but I think I would have told myself that, you know, there's a lot of things that you fear right now, and almost none of them are going to happen. And mm. that you were going to get so many more benefits out of you know, transitioning, out of living as yourself, than you even are aware of now. Things are going to be great in ways that you can't even picture until you live it. And it's so, so worthwhile. It's the best decision you'll ever make. Yeah. You slid by, but there was a word in there. Y'all heard what she said. She said you was afraid of a lot of things that you knew was never going to happen. Yeah. That's the word. Let that sink in. Somebody in here heard that. Something that you are afraid of is never going to happen. 
Step out on faith and do what you have to do, right? I mean, you are a beacon of hope and light and just love. And I am so excited that you are here to share this moment with me and everybody in this room. Yeah? Well, thank you. Yeah. Man, yeah. Now, I borderline can't believe our next guest is even here with us today because he's been everywhere these days. Since headlining last year's virtual Pride concert, he's hosted Eurovision, completed a North American tour, and just finished directing his own music video. So, relax, take it easy, and cast your eyes over to the band. Performing his hit song, Yo-Yo, it's our friend, Mika. <laughs> Having pride in the workplace is something that has taken me a while to figure out, but you really have to learn how to stand your ground and know who you are, be comfortable with yourself, and be able to back yourself up when you feel someone questioning who you are, being able to stick up for yourself and know that you're being supported by your family, your coworkers, and being able to do the best job that you really can do. Rainbow Room, please welcome Mika.
welcome to the show. Thank Y'all, you. one more time for the suit alone, if anything. Lord <laughs> have mercy. Pride, huh? I mean, uh, well, well, think about it. We're at the rainbow room. I know, we're in the rainbow room. Giving so, rainbow. We're at the your rainbow, rainbow room. Self. Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> welcome to the show. I, I kind of went literal with the dress code. You know what? I yeah. actually, I'm going to have to borrow that, OK? Uh, anytime. Because I'm going to go back to LA. I'm going to fit right on in. <laughs> Just walking down Santa Monica Boulevard. Yeah. Nobody would even look at me twice. <laughs> um, now, you have been doing a lot, <laughs> OK? Yeah. First of all, welcome back to New York. Thank you. For Indeed. Give it up. <laughs> Yeah. Now, you just finished hosting Eurovision, and yeah. that had to be an incredible experience. Tell me about well, that. Well, it's kind of, it's, it's remarkable, because it's a show that's really well known in most of the world, yeah. except in the United States, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how to describe it to people. It's basically, yeah. for me, it's a family tradition. Yeah. So since I was a kid, I watched this show where people show up with a song that you've never heard before, and they sing it, in front of millions of people, and you decide who wins, right? Because you vote, and then there's this famous moment where everyone goes, well, Germany, every country gives points. So they go, Germany mm-hmm. gives to, you know, France, 12 yes. points, 12 points. Well, often, actually, German gives France nul point, which means zero points. And so it's on Duolingo! The <laughs> Duolingo all the way. <laughs> what? And it's, it's funny because it's like this, it's taken a whole other dimension. Yeah. Look, ABBA was launched at Eurovision. Yes. Uh, one year, just randomly, uh, Switzerland sent a completely unknown singer yeah. who won. That's Celine Dion. Ooh. And so it's, it's kind of this really maniskin one last year. Yeah. And it went from being a show that used to be watched by 10 million people, 20 million people. The show that we just did yeah. was average viewership of 187 million people. Excuse- <laughs> I didn't know that was still possible. I, no one knew. No one knows that's I possible. I thought that was it's, long ago. It's, what? I know. It's like, it's like numbers from another time. Right. And, and I kid you not, when you are on that stage and you're presenting and you are the one communicating that stuff, you, yeah. mean, you know this feeling. Yeah. At that scale, it does really strange things to parts of your body. Mm. Like, you just suddenly feel like your organs are starting to talk to you. You have internal voices. Like, now you're getting real artistic on me, Mika. No, and I, and I said, oh, I'm talking, talking to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I, I didn't know I had That's how he like writes that. music. Your organs start talking. <laughs> now, <laughs> obviously, that show brings together so many countries, and you bop from place to place to place. How does pride differ from country to country? Ha. <laughs> As a, you're asking a very uh, pertinent question. I mean, it, look, there's a lot of joy. It's become a bigger and bigger thing across the world yeah. in places where it can be a big thing because there's a lot of places where it's illegal. Yeah. So it's, and that is the reason why pride is so important in the places where we are allowed to have a pride parade, a pride month. Uh, it is so important to assume that. It is so important to, to, to kind of explore the narrative of what pride actually is because yeah. it's easy to forget when we're in the midst of it and we're allowed to celebrate pride that there are many, many countries in the world where that's just not possible. Mm. I think the one thing about pride, when I was younger, I didn't have the courage to go to a pride. Mm. I don't know if you ever had that. What? Absolutely. You had that too. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm from the country, so we don't really have any parades like that. Oh. But even when I moved here, <laughs> it was giving, mm, I'm going to watch from back here because I'm a little scared to go. Yeah, you know? exactly. I don't know what people are going to think just, of me. Yeah, I'm going to go get a coffee and just right, watch. Right, I'll just watch from Starbies. Exactly. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I but get it. But at the same time, what was, well, you, come, you, you say you came from the country, there wasn't yeah. that. I came from a half Lebanese family where mm. my grandmother would have killed me if she found out you that I was saying? going to Pride. Although, you know, she was a gay icon, she yeah. would have killed me if I went to a Pride parade. Wow. And the, the, the thing is that over time, the one thing that I'll never forget is that although I didn't have the courage to go to a Pride parade, mm-hmm. I was so grateful that it existed yeah. and that it was happening. Yeah. I was like, one day I'll be able to do that. One day I'll have the courage to do that. Mm. For now, I know it's there, and thank God it's there. Yeah. And that really was something that, that stayed there my whole, my whole childhood. And then 
eventually, you know, things change, you evolve. Yeah, and you've carried this pride throughout many aspects of your career, even down to your content creator, who you hired from Indeed, by the yeah. way. Come on. Uh, you call him your content roadie. Content roadie. How did you hire this person? What were you looking for uh, in terms of the qualifications of this position? Well, I wanted someone who um, wanted to express themselves through social media content. So, yeah. so often with social media content, we, we know now we're allergic when it's fake. We get it. You know what I mean? Y'all be writing lyrics, I swear. <laughs> and, 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 and we know when like, something's just kind of like not really real, and, and it, when it's real, yeah. and the person making it really has passion for what they're doing and has their own stance on yeah. it, it, it really connects and it just flies. So I really wanted someone who would be willing to do that, yeah. to be sincere, and to be able to keep up with the tour. So we, we launched this position, we interviewed people from all across uh, the United States, and there were thousands and thousands of applicants. Yeah. And we chose a girl, I chose a girl actually, who was passionate about collage. And she was just geeking out in the interview about how she loves cutting things up and putting oh, them and making, making art. You yeah. said collage. Collage. I, I know you used to talk about collard greens or what, like <laughs> collage. I love that. <laughs> And she was just passionate, and <laughs> yes. she was colorful, and she was happy, yes. and I was like, she just seems like a cool person to have around, and yeah. I think she'll get it, you know, because when you have spirit, you can survive the rhythm. Now, what motivates you to express yourself through your songs? You know, when I was younger, uh -huh. I would put things in my songs that I didn't have the courage to say in normal words without mm. singing. Um, and like so many people do, you know, you, you express the unexpressible. Uh, yeah. And, and then I realized, because I had a horrible time at school, which seems to be, it's funny because everyone says they have a horrible time at school. I'm like, well, who had a great time at school? I mean, I, you know, did you? I, I loved school. You did? I was the popular nerd, I was cool. Oh. Yeah. Well, I was the opposite of that. <laughs> I was really unpopular nerd. And, and so, but that, that was the thing, I realized that um, if I put a message in a song and then I made the, the song catchy, yeah then people would sing it, and they wouldn't even realize what they were singing. And I was like, oh. Give me one lyric where you felt like that. Uh-oh, uh -oh, what the devil are you uh, to Well, say? In, uh, in, in, for example, in Grace Kelly, yeah. it goes, um, I can be, you know, I can be, uh, someone told me that I sang too effeminate, okay? Uh -huh. And so I wrote, I wrote, well, I can sing and be like Grace Kelly but I'm not going to do that. I was like, should I look older? Should I bend over just for you to put your, my album on your shelf? Oh. The, the, you know, all these different things. Yeah. What do I need to do? Do I need to be a thousand different things apart from what I am truly? Yes. Uh, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be myself. That was written at three o'clock in the morning in a fit of rage when an executive sent me away after six months of work mm -hmm. and the door once again slammed on my face and I wrote that song, I typed out the lyric, yeah. it was a message to him, I sent it to him and he never called me back. Mm. And can I ask you about how many streams does Grace Kelly have? Oh, I don't know, you, a lot. Of course you won't know. Of course you know, it's hundreds of millions. Clearly you're used to storytelling with lyrics about your own sexuality. But this song is for a character in Billy Porter's new film. What's it like to write from a different person's perspective? Well, it's inspiring, especially when it's Billy Porter. Um, because, you know, he, he, he not only does he make you laugh, uh, but he's also a great dramatic actor. Yeah. And this is his first movie that he's directed. Um, and I liked the story. I liked the fact that it was a teen romance between yeah. a trans girl and a boy in a high school. I thought that was such a, an amazing thing to explore and he was the perfect person to do that. And music, being Billy Porter, was so important to him. Mm -hmm. So writing something where, you know, it's not, it's not always towards joy. It's yeah. like, well, you know, let's explore this in a really, really, really tender, stripped back way. Yeah. It's like maybe that will find its place in the film. And it worked and he loved it and he took it. So it's coming out in July. Yeah, and, and we might hear, huh? Yeah, I've actually never sung it before since uh -oh. I wrote it. Yeah. Come on, but I'm getting gonna, a premiere. I'm going to sing it here, and if I forget the lyrics, it's because it's the first time okay. I've ever sung it since I wrote it. We'll give you grace. We'll give you grace. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you because obviously this month is all about pride. What does pride mean to you? Mm. Uh, I, think, I think it's a... Um, 
boy. I think it's the opposite of shame. Mm. And I think that that is, it's something that we deal with all of us at every single day of our lives and in one way or another, whether we tell it to the world or not. Yeah. And so it's, it's about not being ashamed of yourself, not being afraid. Yeah. Um, and it's about being able to also communicate pride to others, yeah. which is why it's such an important thing and such a collective thing. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's something that the, the conversation's never over. It's not a box you tick. You can't tick that box, there's, there's no sense. I mean, I look at my, some of my, I think of my aunt, you yeah. know, and uh, I wrote so many songs about my family. Yeah. I wrote a song about my aunt because she was overweight and I didn't, I wanted to write a song for her because I was so sick of people uh, taking the piss out of her. And I was just like, find a way to be proud about yourself. So pride is, is so many different things. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Ironically, her name is Mimi, mm -hmm. and I wrote this song called Big Girl about her, mm -hmm. and I was like, like, I'm gonna use this thing that's always been used against you, against my mom, because we're both big, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it into a, a, a statement of yeah. freedom, of joy. Um, and then, uh, and actually Mimi, I grew up coming to this building, mm. because Mimi was a producer at one of the TV shows here for 23 years. Wow. And I used to arrive here at four o'clock in the morning Ouch. with her when I was on holiday, and I would sleep underneath the desk just a few floors down. Look at that. And she would be producing her segments mm -hmm. for, for the morning show. And it was like that series, the morning show. And yeah. I would, at, at a certain point, it's like 7 a.m., I was like 10, 12. I would be really sleepy, so I would sleep under her desk, and she'd kick me and wake me up two hours later with like an egg sandwich. <laughs> and I would watch this thing being made. And so yeah. for years, I came to this place. And she always was like, one day we're going to go up to the Rainbow Room. Anyway, I never made it up to the Rainbow Room, but I'm finally yeah, here at the here. Rainbow Room. Yeah. What a story! Now, we've, we've hinted at this, and I'm going to let you go get ready for it, because right. I'm dying to hear this new song, okay? okay. So I'm going to let you go and get ready for that. Okay. But in the meantime, take a look at our final spotlight from the crew here at Indeed's Take Pride Live. <laughs> Pride is having confidence in who you are and in your community and being able to be yourself, your authentic true self, no matter what that is. And it might not look like anybody else in the world, but finding your authentic voice, your authentic presentation, your authentic identity, I think that's pride, really knowing yourself and owning yourself and not being afraid to put that out there in the world, whether that looks like what you wear, what you're playing, what, uh, what kind of music you're listening to, the way you dance, the way you laugh, the things that make you laugh, the things you love. Folks, something absolutely huge is about to go down right here in the Rainbow Room. Taking the stage to perform his new song, Who's Gonna Love Me Now, from the Billy Porter-directed film, Anything's Possible. Once again, make some noise for Mika. Lately, I hear self-destruct. It's like my arms which won't turn off. I've been up and down, spinning round. Yo, you'll never hit the ground. It's just the name. You can tell me once, tell me twice Go and take my own advice I got no one to play Tell me who's gonna love me now 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 Who's gonna love me in the morning Who's gonna love me Let 
is fun What's a boy to do when he's not shining new There's new ones on the scene Nothing left to say Is this the price I pay for the man that I've been Tell me who's gonna love me now Who's gonna love me now say it, but we're reaching the end of the show. I know. I don't know about you, but I've learned a lot this afternoon. Better work starts with finding work that takes pride in you. Better work leads to better lives. And there is nothing more empowering in the workplace than showing up as your true, authentic self. Am I right about that? Yeah. And again, we want to hear from you. Share with us what Take Pride means to you in the workplace by leaving a comment in the live chat or using the hashtag Take Pride Indeed on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I want to thank all of our fabulous guests for joining us on Take Pride Live. Give it up for Vincent. And I want to thank all of you for coming out, our amazing audience. Give it up for yourselves. <laughs> and our friends at the Rainbow Room and Indeed for hosting us. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I know you think I left one person out, OK? I did not leave him out on purpose. We're just not done with him yet. I wish I could quit you, baby, but I can't. I, I need you to do one more thing for me. Can you do that? Yeah. Can he sing one more song for y'all? Is that all right? <laughs> we love an encore. Pride is about letting your light shine. So closing out the show with his song, Grace Kelly, yeah. under the neutral New York City light, give it up one final time for Mika. <laughs> Last time you talked, you reduced me to tears. Do I attract you? Do I repulse you with my queasy smile? Am I too dirty? Am I too flirty? Do I like what you like? I can be awesome, I can be lonesome, guess I'm a little bit shy. Why don't you like me? Why don't you like me? Well, they make me try. I try to be like Grace Kelly. I'm bound on the for two seconds. Tried a little Freddy. I've got an answer to my Why don't you think? Get on my baby, get on my baby Put my life on the brink Why don't 
don't you like me? Why don't you like me? Why don't you like yourself? Should I bet I'll be so loud or cold out? Should I put on your chef? I try to be like Chris Kelly. But I look so too sad. Ah, so I tried a little Freddy. I'm gonna dance to see my. Be brown. 